Hey guys, so this is what we show up to today. We've got some snow we're dealing with. Pouring this in here. Just snowed last night. But they did tarp it, so we got snow on the tarp. We've got to remove the tarps. Clean out whatever snow we got. Then we'll get this thing poured. Hey guys, Mike here. Thanks for watching my video. So the simple answer is no, we definitely don't pour over snow or ice or anything like that. It's just gonna it's just gonna make a mess in the long run. It's gonna end up melting. The floor is gonna end up settling and cracking, and it's just gonna be a big, big problem down the road. So anyway, we got all that cleaned out. It actually took the three of us an hour and a half to clean all that stuff up. You know, I just when we showed up this morning, I expected just maybe to to lift that tarp out slide it up over the wall and then we'd be clean but there was there was almost an inch thick of ice covering that whole thing and it just came up in little pieces I mean, it was down there really really good we didn't really expect to have to clean that off when we showed up this was an hour and a half ride for us down here and when when I first came to looked at it nothing was ready the styrofoam wasn't down they were just backfilling the inside so couldn't really shoot our grades or get anything ready so my expectations were we'd do that when we showed up in the morning and then this is what we showed up to is this all this ice so we ended up having to break it all up into little pieces and shovel it all out and after an hour and a half of that I was I, honestly I was beat you know it, it was it's below freezing here this morning it's in the 20s um, and that's just that's just not what I like doing is shoveling out ice and snow on a job like this you know when someone hires us to come pour a floor like this, a general contractor, my expectations are that we show up and it's ready to go, just like you see right here. It's all ready to go. Clean, dry, no frost, no snow, no nothing like that. So we can just show up and do our job. <clears throat> the, uh, you know, in, in my opinion, it's the general contractor's job to make sure it's, it's ready to go for us. So, you know, who... The builder, the general contractor, whoever hired us to come do this should have been here this morning, early in the morning with his crew and then got that cleaned off for us so we could just show up and do our thing because, you know, concrete's on the road. It's not like we come all the way down here an hour and a half and then call concrete. <clears throat> it was over an hour ride for the concrete too, so it was, we had them on the road before we even showed up in the morning. But we got it off, and then uh, and then we're going to town here, getting the floor poured. So we got two trucks here too. Really, really hot concrete this morning because temperatures are in the 20s. Plus, we put accelerator in it because the temps aren't getting up much out of the 30s today, and you know concrete just doesn't set up very well if uh, it's not warm. So. Pouring it on the on the styrofoam is a bonus in that in that sense. As long as the styrofoam's dry and doesn't have a coating of ice on it, uh, it, it's a bonus. So that'll help it dry up a little bit, cure up. We're getting we're getting this first truck just dumped right out and getting it out of the way. When we, you know, the mix we use a 4,000 psi mix with uh, about 140 150 degree hot water, and then we put accelerators in it. We got high range water reducer in it. When we, when we pour a, a mix like that, number one, the high range water reducer allows us to pour it about a seven. So we get it up to about a seven. We can get it dumped out pretty quick, get it, get it down where we need it. And that might take, you know, it might, this truck here, it would it take five, six, seven minutes to get that all spread out. And then we got to, you know, mag our edges, get our pads in, get it screeded, get it bow floated. And all the time we're doing this because the concrete's so hot and warm, the slump is changing you know it's going from being a nice loose workable mix to being just a little bit stiffer and stiffer the longer we let it sit there so we gotta we gotta hustle when we get it down and make sure we get it screeded before it starts getting too stiff and that's that's always a battle it's always a challenge this time of year on every floor 
um, depending on a little bit a little bit of that depends on the transit you know when the when the trucks driving to the job with that hot concrete in the drum how fast is that drum spinning all the way to the job the faster it's spinning the hotter this stuff's gonna be and the less time we got to work with it if it's just slowly spinning all the way to the job there isn't usually a, you know a problem with it it usually goes down just about like you see right here we had we had enough time with this so we didn't really have to battle it you can see us screen right there it's moving okay so today for today on this top piece it ended up going down pretty good the bot the bottom piece which you'll see here in a minute it did end up setting up pretty good on us pretty quick because that second truck is already here and he's sitting over there just waiting um, in a minute as soon as, as soon as we get him backed up to the foundation I'm gonna go put the accelerator in him and then he's gonna start spinning that in which is gonna heat it up even more but again when when we show up you know the three of us show up on a job we got enough to do as far as getting the floor poured that we don't really want to have to prep it that's not what we're hired to do we're not hired to get it ready if we are then we'll take responsibility for that you know we'll show up early we'll come the day before whatever it takes to get it ready and get it clean but in 99 percent of my jobs where that's not the case you know the case is they hire us just to get the floor in because that's what we do best so we got most of that truck screeded as you can see we'll get it both loaded and I'm gonna jump out and get that second truck right now he's having a hard time getting up the driveway because it's all ice and snow so we had to we had to find a little bit of loose dirt out there and and kinda throw some dirt down over the ice just so we could back him up to where we need it it's a little bit of an incline and those rear dump those rear dump concrete trucks are terrible in ice and snow they, they have no traction at all it doesn't matter how heavy they are they just spin and spin and spin in that stuff so we had to dig up some dirt get them up there Darren's getting that next bay ready while Luke's bow floating because we don't want the slump to change on that too fast before we get it screeded so they're gonna get that down while I'm up there you see I don't even have them backed up yet I'm still working on that <laughs> getting it backed up there I'm we're gonna get him backed up finally right there get him mixed up and then we'll get that last little piece poured right there and then I gotta move him over to get that bottom piece you can see we're starting out with him with a with a pretty good slump there that's probably about a seven that's the that's the bonus of using the high range water reducer it gives you you know it should give you 20 20 minutes or so of really good workable slump in normal conditions and then when <clears throat> you know when you add the, the high heat of the water to it with accelerator we use mostly we use flake bag accelerator then you have even less time you got about 10 12 minutes to work with it before it starts changing and getting stiffer and stiffer you know you can always add a little bit more water if you need to but we tend to like to get him up to slump and then you know try to get him poured without adding much more water to the mix so you can see what the conditions were right there on the on the exterior quite a bit of snow and ice I just couldn't get him up that incline to start with you can see the excavator in the background he kinda helped me dig up some of that loose dirt and throw it on top of the driveway So now we're getting him back to where we need him to get that bottom piece and it was just that was that one spot right there we could get him so the access wasn't like great but at least he could reach it with his chute we're still gonna have to use the 12 foot chute just to get that little room poured but it wasn't too too bad yeah you can see Luke setting that up that shoots pretty high if we try blasting that in with that that high it's just gonna make a big mess So at this point, that second truck, you know, he's been, he's he's probably about two hours old at this point. And I mean, he's only had the accelerator in him for maybe 15 minutes, but still that hot concrete in that drum, it's already starting to set up. We can feel the slump changing right now. So we stopped him and we told him to, to give it a drink, give it eight or 10 gallons. 
just so we we have a few minutes more time to get this thing screeded because we got to screed it all by hand and it it's kind of slopes to that center drain I don't know if you can see that drain right in the center there's a little six inch white drain right in the center this all slopes to that so we just want to make sure we're not fighting the, the slump when we screed it so we can get a nice slope to it You know, with three of us in here, it's not going to take us very long to get this down. It's just a matter of the access, getting it in there. You can see how the the concrete coming out of the truck chute kept hitting ours and kind of moving ours a little bit. We were trying to be careful not to get it right on top of that drain. We didn't want to mess that drain up. And this thing, you know, it was about four or five inches thick down there. Having the chute though makes it pretty handy. Without the chute, this this would have been a mess trying to do this like this. I'm just deflecting it with my with my rake so it doesn't blow out over the chute and hit that drain. Luke's filling up that little tiny piece of wall right there. They uh, when the foundation guys put that stop in, they put it a little bit too low, and the uh, the GC wanted it up about 15 more inches, so we formed it up. So we could pour it right as part of the floor. And Luke just filled that up and he's just gonna float off the top. And then I'm gonna get I'm gonna start screeding this before it before it starts curing up too fast. Slump's already changed back. You should be able to tell that right here. You, you know, if you listen while I screed it, you should be able to hear how stiff that stuff's getting. Look, it's not moving very well right now. I guess being you know being a little bit stiffer it did help hold the shape of the slope a lot better but it wasn't really a ton of slope it was about three quarters of an inch I'm gonna pass that to Darren and he's gonna do that other side then we'll get some more Crete in there and get this finished up So let me, you know, what do you guys, when you guys show up on a job, you, especially you guys that do, that do a lot of floors like us, what are your expectations? Do you, do you uh, show up and have to do a lot of other, what you feel is a lot of other people's work just to get yours ready, get yours cleaned up? Or do you not have to deal with stuff like that? I mean, it seems like every, every uh, late, late fall, this is in November, we have to deal with like, okay, who's going to cover it who's who's going to keep it clean who's going to cover the floor up after to keep that frost protected um like this guy he didn't even know this guy it was actually the excavator that we're working for here uh, I, i'm working for the foundation guy but the foundation guy was working for the excavator he, the excavator didn't even know that the concrete could freeze he didn't even know it had to be covered and protected so you know we brought that up to him and he had to make arrangements for that. He hadn't planned on doing that. So that's another thing, you know, it's just, we show up and we'll do our thing, but you, you know, you gotta make sure that it's protected after. This stuff will freeze pretty easily if it temperature gets down around 28, 29 degrees Fahrenheit. The stuff's gonna freeze, top's gonna peel off if it freezes, so. Any guys, expectations, you know, what are yours? Let me know down in the comments. So thanks again for watching. Come on back, and we'll see you on the next one. Oh, it's my